I'm Akhil Mohan. I work as a software engineer at VMR by Broadcom. I'm also a ContainerD maintainer. And welcome to the ContainerD project update and deep dive. So first, let's get into the project updates. So uh, let's look at the usage growth of ContainerD in the past two years. So this is based on a CNCF annual survey that was published in like April 24, based on data collected from like uh, mid 23 to December. Uh, 23. So based on that, the penetration of container D uh, into the market has gone from like 68 percentage to 74 percentage in 2023. And the percentage of uh, organizations that are using container D in production or evaluating as, uh, as also like in 53 percentage and 20 percentage uh, respectively. So this is like actually the usage of container D in the market. And uh, owing to the removal of Docker shim from Kubernetes and people directly starting to use ContainerD, the ContainerD adoption has actually started uh, almost doubled in the past two years. Uh, th th this is based on a survey that was done by Datadog. Uh, now let's look into the community growth. So this is uh, actually the people who are contributing to ContainerD. And uh, this is based on a CNCF project velocity report that they publish uh, every year. And uh, as you can see, like uh, United States, uh, uh, China, India, and like France are like some of the top contributors to uh, uh, containerity. These are not just like uh, court uh, court committers, but also like people who raise issues and like uh, help in the community also. Uh, this is the. Uh, graph that is generated from the CNCF dev stat for containerd for the actual code commits that are going into the core containerd repo and also to the uh, containerd sub projects here also like you can see the uh, distribution across various regions uh, for the code committers now we have uh, since uh, kubecon china 2023 uh, three new maintainers uh, are added like i'm one of the new maintainers that was added into containerd and uh, in the adoption of the uh, containerd across like various cloud providers and kubernetes distros almost all of the cloud providers uh, and like kubernetes distributions uh, have containerd package in them or like offer containerd in one way or the other uh, now let's take a look at their basic uh, arc basic level architecture of containerd uh, containerd has a uh, Default, like at the client level, containerd, uh, there is like Kubelet or Kubernetes that interfaces with containerd via the container runtime interface. Then you have like the container engines like Docker that uses containerd underneath, then tools like BuildKit and also developer tools like NetCTL and Finch from AWS. Containerd has also a rich set of gRPC API. The, again, the CRA API comes here where the Kubelet or Kubernetes can interface with the core of containerd for creating ports, running containers, taking on their lifecycle, etc. And also containerd has a gRPC API for the various services that containerd offers, basically for the image service, uh, container service, snapshots, uh, and like that. Now, coming into the core of the containerd, we have a services uh, like e image content uh, diff and snapshot services that basically handles like how the image is stored how like uh, pulling the image from registry and all of these are like actually in a pl pluggable method also then we have a metadata part in containerd that stores the information about all this uh, data uh, in a bold database locally on the node the snapshotter is like uh, actually a, again a plugin implementation uh, with containerd default providing like native overlay and better of a snapshotter for like how, how the image snapshot is being done also containerd also has a, a few of the shims for uh, ha handling the uh, running of the containers and uh, containerd uh, can work with like any of the oca compatible shims like shims and like uh, can run containers using RunC on Windows, uh, RunC on Linux, and run HCS on Windows, or RunJ on like FreeBSD, which is currently in a experimental stage. We also have support for like RunWasi for running Wasm workloads. Now, containerd can be like easily extended because of the pluggable architecture. So, like for example, snapshotters for like star GC snapshotter extra can be like easily uh, included into containerd and can be used without changing the core 
uh, code of containerity, so that like remains almost stable. And like uh, clients like NetCTL, which is like a uh, Docker-like CLI for interfacing with containerity. Now let's look into the support, supported releases of containerity. Currently, like we have 1.6 and 1.7 release that are active. And 1.6 is like a extended uh, long-term support release, and 1.7 is uh, an extended support release. Like that, uh, the EOL of that will be like the same as 1.6. So, for owing for the backward compatibility, and the containerd 2.0 release is like currently we are in the RC phase, and we have the 2.0 RC3 uh, currently going on, and like we are expecting a next RC4 like in the coming weeks. Now going on to the Kubernetes support for uh, containerd. So containerd 1.6 and 1.7 series are support for like both uh, CRI versions v1 uh, v1 and v1 alpha 2. So both these versions will be supported till the EOL of both 1.6 and 1.7. This is because like the later versions in containerd 1.6 and 1.7 are used by cloud providers and like with older versions of KHS. And the V1 Alpha 2 is a deprecated version in 1.7 and will be like completely removed in uh, 2.0. Uh, containerd also has a, apart from the main containerd, containerd core project, we also have a few sub projects like uh, NetCTL, which is also going for a 2.0 release currently in R RC1. And snapshotters, uh, like NIDA snapshotter and StarGC snapshotter that helps with uh, lazy loading. and we are run wasi for like uh, running the wasm workloads and uh, rust extensions which actually provide uh, rust crates for like interfacing with containerd and like i i probably take the rest uh, it's probably something uh, it's probably something that interested a lot of people uh, that containerd 2.0 uh, 2 is coming soon of course the official version hasn't been released yet. Actually, we've been officially working on Kennedy 2.0 for over a year now. Since since the 1.7 uh, since the 1.7 release, uh, the version as it was released in March March of this year. The most recent version is RC3, and if nothing else, 2.0 will be released this year. Uh, before uh, before we introduce uh, the new features, let's look at the impact, uh, in, uh, incompatible changes uh, that every uh, that everyone needs to be uh, aware of. Uh, the removed features, removed configs, and config migration, uh, struct, structural changes to projects and uh, components uh, that affect the import of packages into other application as well as learning and uh, troubleshooting. These removed features were actually deprecated, uh, deprecated in different, uh, different, uh, different, different, different versions of version 1, uh, example CRI v1 alpha 2, and were still available in 1.6 or 1.7 for backward Compatible uh, compatibility. However, we have uh, re uh, we have removed these features in two point zero. Uh, so be careful if you depend on them. Uh, a list removal can be found in the linked released do uh, document document document, along with the uh, corresponding and uh, upgrade recommendations. Uh, this uh, this uh, deprecated configs has uh, has also been removed, and you need to keep an eye on them, uh, as well as see them in uh, releases. In two uh, in two point zero, we introduced config version three for new features. Of course, you can you can keep continuing to use the Kennedy version one config. Uh, format. Kennedy uh, server provides the ability to migrate config. Uh, if you are sure you don't need to roll back from version 2 to version 1, then you can run the Kennedy config migrate command. Oh, here. 
Uh, you can view the default config where uh, where config uh, where content config default, uh, and the documentation includes uh, components, uh, component component configs as well. Uh, to make it uh, to make it easier to know which de uh, deprecated uh, configs and uh, filters can be added at the deprecation interface, which allows you to use the CTR de uh, deprecations uh, deprecation list and uh, find out which deprecated uh, filters you are using. This feature uh, will require the version of content D and uh, CTR. A lot of project restructuring happened in uh, version two. These are the main directory, uh, directory involved. The root directory is removed, uh, reserved for config, config and uh, build, build, uh, build fails. Uh, no Golang code. Uh, the CMD directory is removed and support, uh, supported uh, command, uh, commands such as Kinetic Shim run C V1 and uh, move the move the main move the main logic for uh, for Shim from runtime V2 Shim to CMD Kinetic Shim run C V2. Uh, the client is probably the one you need to focus on the most. All the client code has moved from the root directory to the client directory, and the path to the package packages has also changed. All the all the Kinetic D APIs are available here as a separate mod, uh, module. Uh, this maintains the interface. Uh, Defini de uh, interface definitions, uh, util utility functions, and uh, and modules, and uh, some building implementations of the core underlying modules. Uh, the interface uh, in, in internal directory contain, uh, contains uh, implementations of pre private modules such as CRI. As well as packages that have no need to be made public are not uh, currently referenced, uh, referenced by any other projects. Plug uh, plugins. Uh, most of Kubernetes plugins are re uh, resist registered here where in need, and also include specific impl uh, implementations of some plugins. Such as uh, such as Kubernetes gRPC, so uh, gRPC service and uh, simple shorts. Uh, Non-core package uh, packages used by client and the uh, Kubernetes server. Uh, these directories, as well as uh, as well as arc uh, adjustments to some components. Component, components such as CRI can affect your community based uh, development, uh, troubleshooting, and uh, code learning. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's take a look at some of the of the new feature in two point zero. Uh, Continuity 2.0 has has been uh, in progress for more than a year, and uh, most of the features also appeared as uh, ex ex experiment, exper experiment, 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 experiment filters in 1.7. For the filters that have been uh, that have been frequent, uh, frequent, frequent. frequent Frequently mentioned, mentioned in previous in previous Kubecon China, Europe, uh, Europe and uh, North America, and have no signif uh, signif significant significant new modifications. We may not introduce them in detail. Uh, let's take a look at some of the more recently updated features, start, starting with Sandbox. Uh, whose recent update also 
brought brought arc arc changes to CRI. Uh, this arc picture updated since August to August August twenty August twenty uh, doesn't guarantee that it will not be modified in the future. Let's take run time. Uh, let's take run port sandbox as an example. Uh, the sandbox filter is divided uh, divided uh, into into two parts. The sandbox store service for sandbox metadata uh, management uh, management management uh, with with stores the data in the metadata metadata DB and the sandbox management, which is now decoded through the sandbox control interface. Kennedy has built in uh, support for two implementations, uh, port sandbox and uh, shim, and the support access to other implementations where, pro where, pro where proxy plugins. Uh, the sandbox controller can be set where the CI, uh, where the CRI runtime config uh, config. Uh, the uh, the port sandbox is uh, familiar implement uh, implementation implementation and the default which runs the sandbox by port container. Uh, the shim controller leaves the running of the sandbox to shim to shim sandbox service. Shim can decide how to create and manage the sandbox for its own container runtime. Uh, and for many runtime, you can stop going through the post container creation post, uh, container creation process. Uh, if you choose to use the proxy plugin, you have even more flex. Uh, Flexibility, flex, 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 flexibility, uh, even more flexibility. Uh, maybe you can get more out of the sandbox API talk this afternoon, uh, but uh, it's in Chinese. Okay. Uh, the next feature is a uh, node resource interface or like an array. So NRA acts as like a middleware between the CRI spec and the OCI spec. So by default, like uh, container they translate the CRI into a OCI runtime spec so that like the runtime can run it. So uh, NRA allows like for plugging like domain specific or vendor specific logic into the OCI runtime spec. So uh, NRA can actually subscribe to uh, events from the runtime uh, for the con in a container lifecycle like container start, post start, and update, container removal, etc. So how it actually works is the CRI request is like uh, from uh, from the container D CRI plugin. Uh, the OCI spec is generated, and then the uh, NRI plugin actually converts uh, or adjusts the OCI spec so that like some additional information or like some more uh, data related to the uh, can be added to the runtime spec and then passes it on to the runtime. So this is uh, mostly useful in case like you want to allocate GPU in containers without making much ch code changes to the core of the container D. So you can think of uh, NRA sim similar to uh, OCI hooks but, but are like much simpler to use. Uh, now uh, transfer API. Transfer API was uh, introduced in Containerd 1.7 as an experimental feature, and like in 2.0, it will be uh, default. So Transfer API provides a very simple interface for uh, various operations that Containerd can do. For example, uh, a pull operation in the Transfer API is defined as a transfer from a registry to image store. A push will be like an image store from registry. So as you can see the, from the interface, it's like always based on the source and destination that you give, like the different operations are defined. For, or like a tag, like you, you are retagging an image will be basically from the container D, from one source will be container D image store and like the destination will be again container D uh, image store. So the, those are the features like uh, that will be going in. Uh, then the future and in development features. Uh, so the transfer so the transfer service in CRA is like still in development um, uh, around the credential management and everything. And then like 
uh, we are also planning for like a higher level image service and higher level container service so the higher level image service is actually uh, to make the clients like netcetl and mobi code like much simpler and uh, higher level container service should help uh, help with simpler interface for like starting containers and streaming uh, streaming io through the uh, container d api and uh, that's uh, all the talk and like if you want to get involved like we have the container d and container d dev slack channel in cncf where like most of the maintainers and users hang out and we also have a uh, monthly uh, meeting on every second and fourth uh, thursday you can it's available at the cncf calendar where if you want to uh, raise any issues or like discuss on some topics or you want to bring in some new features where it, uh, where it can be discussed and yeah uh, that's about it thank you and any questions so the currently the how we run the test are like for uh, both the 1.6 1.7 and uh, main branches of container d for all the active releases of uh, kubernetes we are running the test continuously at the head of the branch so like how we define the compatibility is like uh, for example uh, there is uh, So in this one, like actually I have mentioned for uh, Kubernetes uh, 131, we have mentioned the releases are like 1720. So 131 is the latest Kubernetes release and 1720 and 1634 are compatible. So that's because like uh, both of these were the uh, latest release that we were actually testing on the release branch of uh, the 131 at that time. So that's how we define the compatibility. So that is like for sure compatible, but previous versions also will be compatible because of the CRA V1 and V1 Alpha 2 versions are anyway supported. So there shouldn't be any issues, but this will be like actually properly tested on the Kubernetes CI infra. That's what the versions that we have mentioned there.